So much has changed since last Easter. The world has been shaken. Life has been disrupted. What we once called normal seems like it may never return. It's been easy to be discouraged, to lose hope, to feel the foundations of our faith begin to crumble. It's hard to keep our feet planted when the ground beneath feels like shifting sand. Now more than ever, we need to stand on the truth of Easter, a day which changed our eternity, changed our world forever. Death was defeated by life. Sin was consumed by mercy. The grave was swallowed up by victory. See, even in the darkest of moments, the love of Jesus could not be stopped. His faithfulness could not be broken. And when the dust settled, Jesus, he stood alive and victorious. Today, may we remember the truth of Easter, the power of the resurrection, and the promise of eternity. Yes, the world has been shaken, but the grave, it's still empty. And Jesus, he's still risen. Hi everybody, it's Pastor Martin Phelps here again. I'm so pleased that you're watching. I'm so pleased that you're subscribing and liking and or telling your friends to subscribe and liking and sharing because as I said before, it helps the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ get around the world to various people in different countries and it really helps us spread the gospel and God is so good because we have the internet to help us do good things. The internet can do very bad things if you let it but it can do very good things. And um, there was a, a person that was from one of the very big computing companies, computer companies speaking, and I saw that he said the internet can be much bigger than anything else, television or anything, if you find it and what it's got to offer. And so I really want people to find the Word of God on it. There's, there's, there's good and bad in everything, but when, the, when God does this, God starts to promote it, and expand it and it can never stop expanding that's what's so great about it and um, as much as it can expand in bad things it can expand in good things and all things that God uses for good the devil will always try and reciprocate and try and use for bad but praise God we're on a great wicket and thanks to you out there that are watching every week I really appreciate the Word of God that's able for us I really appreciate you watching so we can spread the Word of God and like I said, please, I'm not going to say this every week, but please like uh, and, and tell your friends to subscribe and share it because then we can grow and grow and grow and more and more people can view it. And it doesn't cost you any time to do that. It doesn't cost me any time to do that. And one sermon like this can spread the word to literally thousands, <clears throat> hundreds of thousands, millions of people and so on because of just the word of God because of the internet and because of us being obedient. It's very, very much easier than it used to be. Before we used to have tapes and videos and things like that. And if they weren't available, you have to get books and they are, you know, of course there's books and we can, uh, it's always good to read books and so on. But this way of messaging, uh, uh, touching the world is enabled people to see messages that multi-millions of people will in the future that they weren't able or wouldn't have been able to see before. And everybody in the world, like I've said a hundred times before, there's eight billion people. When your, your vision of the world, you must see eight billion people, all that Jesus died for. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The greatest scripture in the Bible, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And that's ultimately the purpose of the gospel is to touch the world. I just want to say to you, thanks everybody for your support your kindness, whichever way you supported us, I really appreciate it. You're so kind. You're such a wonderful people out there. I appreciate from the bottom of my heart the kindness and the love that you show me. It's just so good to feel the support of you out there. Even though I can't see you and even though I'm just looking in front of a camera, I can feel you 
uh, uh, you know, I'm not getting all, uh, psych all psychologically oriented here or spiritually oriented, but I know I can feel your presence and your strength and your kindness and your love, and it means such a lot to me that although I'm, what, although I'm speaking here in front of a camera, that you are out there to support me, and I really, really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Also, Happy Easter to everybody. I pray you have a wonderful long weekend and uh, Friday, uh, uh, Good Friday on Friday was a day off and also it's a day to remember obviously with Christ's burial and today is Christ's resurrection and tomorrow you can have the day off and just totally relax. So praise God for wherever you're living in the world. If you're living in the Northern Hemisphere, we're getting into summer, which is great. If you're living in the Southern Hemisphere, then you're going into winter. But I don't feel sorry for you because probably most of you have had a very, very hot summer anyway. So that's what we're hoping to have here in the Northern Hemisphere. Right, my title today is something that God just gave me a couple of weeks ago. Obviously, it's still faith I'm preaching on, still the four pillars of the church. <clears throat> I'm not going to be that much longer preaching about faith and then I'll get into the third pillar. This is the second pillar. The first pillar was talking about money. And if you have any chance at all, to go back and look at all the sermons I preached on money just in the, in the last two or three or four months that will really bless you because they're really balanced according to God's word. I don't believe there's any flesh in that. I believe it's all God's word and it'll really encourage your life and bless you. That's the first pillar of the church that keeps the church strong, that keeps you, thereby keeping your faith and your walk strong if you understand what God's saying about money. Number two is faith. Second pillar is faith because if without faith it's impossible to move forward with God, to please God, to, for God to respond to us, it's, in, it's just literally a closed door. It's literally having no key to a door that we need to open. Even though right beyond there's a great lot of treasure, faith opens the door to that treasure. So you need to listen to what either myself or one of you, someone you'll list, some other teachers, preachers, whatever, preaching about faith, what the Word of God says about faith, because without faith, you cannot move forward with your life. Remember I said the two greatest ingredients uh, God says that you need are faith and love. And so have a happy, wonderful Easter and use that as a time to bond with your family. Use it as a time to bond with those close to you. Use it as a time to be a blessing to the world and use it as a time to reflect on God's goodness in your life, how good God is. But the title here is Just Because God is Silent, doesn't mean he's inactive. Let me say that again. Just because God is silent doesn't mean he's inactive. So many people think that because God is silent in their lives, he feels silent, feels like he's not speaking, feels like they've done everything. They've prayed. They've spent time with God. They've done all these things. They've worshiped God. You've, you've been out there. You've been telling people about Jesus, but in your own personal private mind, you feel God is silent. But I want to tell you something that God spoke to me this week and said to tell you that just exactly these words, and I've written it down as the title, only this week did he give me these words. And all of this regards faith because you need to have faith to really believe that he's not silent. He says, just because God is silent doesn't mean that he's inactive. It, what, I'm, what is God trying to say to me to tell you? He's saying just because in your life, your mind, your situation, God is silent. Doesn't seem like he's come through. Doesn't seem like he's changed the situation he prayed for. Doesn't feel like he's around you. Doesn't, you don't feel his presence. Doesn't feel when you pray that there's any response. Doesn't feel when you worship him that there's any response. And your everyday situation just actually some could look is the same every day, sometimes worse. You feel physically maybe tired and, and, and just lousy and, and, and you just feel like, God, where are you? But, it's, but, but I want to tell you now is that just because God seems like he's silent, God is silent, doesn't mean he's inactive. In other words, right behind the scenes there, right behind the scenes of God, uh, you feeling like God is silent, he actually is not silent. Your mind, the devil, will tell you that he is silent, but he's not silent. He's not inactive. He is active behind the scenes. God is is active behind the scenes. Remember the Bible says God works out all, th God is showing himself strong on your behalf. You don't know when he's showing himself strong. He's working on your behalf to show himself strong. He's working behind the scenes. He's doing things behind the scenes to bless your life, to bring increase to your life, to answer your prayers, 
to strengthen your body, to do everything you need to do, to get you to be closer to him and for him to get closer to you. So uh, you might feel right now today on this uh, wonderful Easter Sunday, you might feel that God is silent, but it doesn't mean he's inactive. It's a very, very good title. It's something that I never would have thought of unless the Holy Ghost brought it to me. But I want you to remember this. Watch this video over and over again. Get it into your head that when he looks silent, he's actually being active. He's not inactive. And I just want to go to Isaiah 54, verse 7. Isaiah 54, verse 7. If you would like to turn there with me, I read from the King James, like I said, in my personal uh, feelings, it's not, maybe I'm a bit biased, but I believe the old, the first version, the old ver the, the original version of the King James and the Amplified Bible, the King James Version and the Amplified Bible to me are the two best versions that are the most accurate. That's just my opinion. There's lots of other versions, but some versions can take you so into modern day language that they get away from the basics of the truth of what God's trying to talk about. That's just my opinion. But I believe that uh, for me, the old King James is very, very good for real power and translation. And it gets to the nitty gritty of what God's trying to say as close as it can to the Greek and the Hebrew. And the Amplified is very, very good as a backup to that to make you understand it in much more English, much more modern English. That's me. And I'm giving them a shout out, but I believe that's what I've always used myself. It says in Isaiah 54, 7, for a small moment, for a small moment, Isaiah is saying here, remember Isaiah was a great prophet, have I forsaken you? For a small moment have I forsaken you, but with great mercies will I gather you. Now, this is not, in, this is not literal that God has forsaken you. God brought me to this scripture because it feels like that for a small moment, when I say small moment, that could be a week, two weeks, a day, a month, an hour, a year, uh, two years. Small moment could be any real period of time because small in God's eyes is large sometimes in our eyes, but it could be any period of time, not forever obviously, but for a moment in your life, however long that can be, you could have felt that God has forsaken you. Well, I, 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 I want to say this to you right now, that God can't forsake us because he lives inside us. This is not a literal translation. This is just figuratively speaking. This is just, uh, uh, an, uh, is just an analogy to how we feel many times that God has forsaken us. In other words, God is silent. He's not there. Where are you, God? You're not there. Where are you? Remember Jesus cried, felt God had forsaken him. Even Jesus, the Son of God, felt the Father had forsaken him. Had the Father forsaken him? No, but that's how he felt like. On the, right on this Easter weekend, over 2,000 years ago, uh, at Gethsemane, he felt like he'd been forsaken by the Almighty God, by his Father. Son of God, Jesus, without sin, felt that. It wasn't the case, but that's how he felt. We feel that God is silenced and because he's silence, we feel he's forsaken us. We feel he's not active. We feel that God Almighty isn't taking a, an activity in our lives. And we feel that he's not prevalent. And therefore, where's he gone? And that he's forsaken us. It's a feeling. It's not the truth, but it does happen to us. It does happen to us. You, like I said to you, God's still acti active. He's not inactive. But you will feel like Isaiah said you will feel many times. And you have to go by faith and say, actually, God lives inside me. He's there when I worship him, but I, because I don't feel anything in my mind, I don't feel it in my body, even in my spirit. I'm not feeling a connection or anything like that. You know, everybody always says, well, when, when they got in the spirit, when they got in the flow, whatever. But there's many times where you feel nothing. There's many times when I've seen some of the greatest gifts of the spirit operating through me. Um, tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy. The word of knowledge, the word of wisdom when God's used me. Gifts of healings, even, even when God's used me to do miracles at times with people. I have not felt anything. And in my own personal life, there's many, many times when I haven't felt anything. And you don't go by what you feel, but i uh, just talking about it on an everyday basis. But I want you to learn right now that it might seem that for a small moment he's forsaken you. Uh, and what, God, what really God's trying to, Isaiah's trying to say is you'll feel forsaken then you'll feel fine, then you'll feel, but you don't go by your feeling, you just go by faith, that God is there all the time, because the word of God says that he lives in us, and makes his abode in us, and will never leave us, or forsake us. Now, this is what God, what I want you to, what I, what I want you to get to here, when I get a couple of scriptures here, um, I want you to, I just want you to notice something God showed me, 
is in Isaiah 54, 7, the greatest thing is it gets back to feelings again. It feels like he's gone. Remember, I've been speaking a lot about trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Why do you have to trust with all your heart? Because if you trust with only a little bit of your heart, you're going to go over to your feelings and your mind's going to get you and your senses are going to get you and you're going to feel like he's just forsaken you. Well, I'm, adding, I'm continuing on with that in a sense right now. And I'm saying you're going to feel like he's gone many times. Sometimes I can spend hours and hours praying. And even after four or five hours praying, I can still not feel like he's there. Other times in two minutes, I feel the presence of God. We're not going by feelings. He can come down. He can move. He can. Uh, when I preach to people, the Spirit of God comes upon me. Um, um, you know, God will use you in, in different ways. You could just be standing there. The other day I was at, a, at, at, at someone's house and, uh, uh, and there was a man there that, uh, that, 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 that has been through things and so on in his life and young man, lovely man and uh, God wanted to touch him because God wanted him to believe in him and God just showed me straight away that he was a false driver and, when, and I just went up and I said, are you, are you a false driver? And he said, yes, how did you know? And his wife said, he drives like a maniac and I said, you need to slow down because if you don't slow down, you can have an accident. But the, God used me to say that to him because God wanted to get to him where he was. Now, I didn't feel the presence of God at all that day and then suddenly it came on me and I ministered to him and then I just got back to not feeling anything. You can't go by what you feel like. You can't go. God will use you with other people. You can feel great. You can feel the anointing. But the, the anointing lives with inside us. And it's not what our feelings tell us. It's how we, it's our everyday walk with God by faith. And then when God does want to, us to feel his presence it'll come on us and sometimes i've been in meetings where the presence of god is so powerful i feel like i can't even walk i begin my legs begin to shake i feel like you know i'm right close to heaven you just feel that incredible dynamic power of god on you that anointing as you're ministering and so on but there, and there can be times by myself i felt like that in god's presence but it's it's at the most inopportune times it's not at the times when i've wanted it to be there and mo many times god will use me or you to just operate in faith every day and not have those feelings so i i i just want, felt god say this to me to tell you don't let this get into your thinking mode don't let this Get into your thinking mode. If you start to feel like he's left you for a small moment and you get it into your thinking mode, the way of thinking, it'll draw you away from God. Don't let it get into your thinking mode. Your mind will quickly pick up on it and say, where is God? Where's his presence? What about this? What about that? Look at this. Look, if, if, if he was really God or you might believe he's God, you might believe he's able, but if he was a willing God, your life wouldn't be like this. There's always 20 reasons that your mind will give you and the devil will add on to those reasons why God has left you for a moment or it hasn't been there any of the time or if he is there, doesn't care for you. Be very careful not to let it get into your thinking mode. So in a very simple way, I'm going to just give you a couple of scriptures here, what to do with that and when that happens. In Isaiah 54 verse 1, if you just go back from verse 7, if you go to Isaiah 54, verse 1, the first thing Isaiah says here is, Sing, O barren, sing, O barren, you that did not bear, and break forth into singing and cry aloud. What is he saying is here? He's saying, you believe God, you're praying. I'm interpreting it in simple New Testament English. It's prophecy for us that, that we have prayed, we've done everything we know how, but we feel like we're barren. We feel like there's nothing happening in our lives. We've prayed. We believe God. We've read our Bibles. We, we've stood strong. We've stood in prayers of agreement. We've, we've worshipped God. We've done everything. But nothing's happening. It feels like he's gone. It feels like I said to you, he's silent. But this will make you connect up with God and force your spirit man into such strength that your whole body and mind will line up and realize that he's actually acted behind the scenes. What do you do? You start to sing. You're feeling barren now. What's barren? Lady without child. It's a lady without the child. In other words, it hasn't happened. Things aren't going on. I'm believing by faith. I haven't seen the I haven't seen the manifestation of my faith. Things are dark. Things look like they're not going to happen, but I'm going to sing. Hallelujah, I'm going to sing. I'm going to start to sing. I want you to put up your hand right now and just say, Lord, I'm going to sing. And after we finish today, just start to sing a bit to the Lord. Just sing. Make melody in your hearts to the Lord. You might not be a singer, but it doesn't matter. You, you know, some people are called to sing for the Lord, but all of us are called to sing to the Lord. Some people are called to, to sing for the Lord, 
but all of us are called to sing to the Lord. That just came right out of my spirit right now. We're all called to sing to the Lord. And as you begin to sing, your spirit man will get strong. And as you praise and worship God and sing to Him and sing and make melody in your hearts and sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and sing in the Spirit and sing in the Holy Ghost and sing in other tongues, as you begin to do it, you'll start to get strong in Him. And somewhere from the inside, even if you don't feel the presence of God on the outside, on the inside, you'll start to get strong again. And you'll, 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 you'll realize that you'll reactivate what's going on in your spirit and you'll connect up with God's activation. That God is not silent, that He's active out there. But just sing, O barren one. It says in verse 54, verse 1, Sing, O barren, because not that you are barren, God's going to manifest your prayers, but at the moment, nothing's happening. It's a dark place you're in, but you start to sing. And I'm not going to sing for five or ten minutes. I might sing for an hour or two hours. I'm going to keep on singing until I get strong back in God, until I feel like no longer am I going to be barren again. Then in Isaiah 61, they're all in Isaiah today. Uh, or just one more that's not in Isaiah. But in Isaiah 61 here, verse 3, it says, uh, Isaiah 61, 3, says, To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes. God will give the church. The Zion is the church. Again, he's, uh, Isaiah is prophesying to the church that God wants to give his presence to the church, his power to the church. He wants to give you his beauty for the ashes that's you. You might feel that you and the world around you is just dirty ashes, but he's going to give you his beauty for the ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. Your mourning, M-O-U-R, not mourning as in morning time, but M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. Mourning. He's going to give you joy. You're mourning right now. You're feeling lousy. Everything's gone wrong. It looks like it's a terrible world. Looks, your mind's telling you God isn't there. You feel like He's forsaken you. But I want to tell you, you just start to praise Him and worship Him because it says here uh, from that next scripture, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. When heaviness comes upon you, it might be, it's the world we live in. It's not Satan necessarily, but Satan is the author of heaviness. Satan is the author of negativity. Satan is the author of depression and anxiety and all these terrible things. But as you have a garment of praise and you start to sing and you start to praise him, right then what will happen is the, the morning in you will turn to joy. The morning in you will turn to joy. And the praise as you begin to praise, the heaviness will go. That heaviness that just wants to sit upon you, that wants to oppress you, the world we're living in. You might have just had a couple of hours where all of a sudden your mood's trying to change. You're feeling dark. You're feeling depressed. You're feeling nothing's happening. You feel like you're alone. You feel, God, why do you still love me? Are you being inactive? No, he's not. Are you being silent? No, he's not. But you just end off praising him. Just begin to praise Him, begin to praise Him, and keep on praising, and keep on praising, and keep on praising. So I go, like my daughter said, when she goes for a run, she runs long, long distances, and she's extremely fit. But she always says the first five or ten minutes are the hardest. Then it just gets much better. With praise, it gets much harder because it looks ridiculous in the natural. I'm just going to praise Him and praise Him. And everybody, and I'm by myself here, and, and, and my mind's telling me, what are you wasting your time? But as I get into five minutes, six minutes, eight minutes, ten minutes, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty minutes, as I do it, I feel joy coming. Like I've never had joy from the inside that just takes over my mind. Joy from the inside that just makes me want to go on with God. Joy from the inside that knows that God's alive and that He's real. As you begin to put on that garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The heaviness will go because the garment of praise, as you begin to praise, it's like a garment. It destroys that heaviness and the heaviness is gone. And all of a sudden, in a split period of time, you just feel lightness. I've had that happen to me so many times where all this heaviness has tried to come on me. The heaviness of life. I trust God. I've got faith in God. I've all those things. But I live in a natural world. And these things will try and come upon you. But I've learned over the years. You just begin to praise Him. And you carry on praising Him. And you keep on going until you feel better. Then you still keep on going after that. And then all of a sudden, you're, you're, you're the fire of God's back on you again. And you have great joy. And you have release. And you feel like you've broken through in the name of Jesus. And no devil can stand against it. Notice it says spirit of heaviness. Well, whatever spirit or evil in this world is trying to come near you, that praise will just release you into a place where that has to go in Jesus' name. And so, and lastly here, uh, the last scripture today is I just want you to go to Philippians 2. If you could just turn me with, with your Bibles here. As I said, I really appreciate it if you get a Bible or, you know, it's fine if you look on your phone or whatever. But l just look at the scriptures because as you look at them, look at them on the screen. But, you know, maybe if you want to look at them on the screen while I'm preaching, but then afterwards go back to them and meditate upon them because they'll get in your spirit and they'll never leave. 
I'll never leave. These are scriptures that have stayed in me uh, for, for many, many, many years now. So let's go to Philippians 2, Philippians 2 verse 13. Just to show you that God isn't silent and he's not inactive. God showed me this scripture to give it to you. We, we know the scripture, but I hardly have ever preached on it. Philippians 2.13. Philippians 2.13. It says, Therefore, it is God which works in you, for it is God which works in you. He's working in you 24-7, may I add, to both to will, that's to do his will. What's his will? That you might be prosperous, you might be blessed, which is above all things that you prosper in health, to take you out of the situation you're in, to answer your prayers, to give you joy, to give you happiness, to give you all uh, spiritual strength, to use you spiritually, to bless your mind, to get healing to your mind, healing to your emotions, physical healing to your body, finances to come to you, finances to come to you, all of these things, and to give you the right uh, partner, uh, and, 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 the, and, and the right relationships and the right the friends that you want and all those things to take you out of that terrible situation you might in and you know maybe some of you out there feeling like you caterpillars this has just come to me but guess what God's going to make you in a beautiful butterfly a caterpillar is a necessary evolution to become a butterfly but it's not much a, cater a caterpillar can do but a butterfly is free and beautiful and can fly you're going to become a butterfly and I want to tell you now, God is working in you both to do His will and to do of His good pleasure. In other words, He's working in you 24-7, you, the person that's watching me right now. I'm not talking about me. Yes, He's doing it for me, but you, not your friend sitting next to you, not the person up the road, not your boss, you. What, what about, does God love me the same as everybody? He loves everybody equally the same. And all you've got to do is respond to Him. He's working in you. He's living in you and working in you. He's not silent. He's working in you, even though you don't feel it, like I said, both to, do, both to do His will and to do His good pleasure. Good things. He wishes above all things that you prosper. The Bible says there's a scripture God's given me to give you out there, Proverbs 10, 22, the blessings of the Lord. He's giving you His blessings. Maketh you rich and adds no sorrow. It's not just necessarily rich in money. He's saying rich in every area of your life. And He doesn't want you to have sorrow. That is the God we serve. If God be for us, who can be against us? Have a fantastic Easter. I hope this has made you strong. Please don't forget to subscribe, to like, to share, send it all to your friends, because like I said, that's what God would have you do. And that's what God wants to do for this ministry. And thank God you can do it and it's free of charge and I can do it and be a blessing and God's work can go out across the world. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. I'll see you next Sunday.